If you see Dr. John Cabbage for the first time, wave at me. So, come to know a new friend. And Sean Bull is a member of your classes. Maybe you know him first. He is doing a master's degree, research. And uh, Dr. Cabbage is his supervisor. And they asked to get our input to their research, to his research. And I thought about having our hands on real research, real research, like the mini proposal we're doing, or like your CCK or Capstone or whatever you are doing. So the, here is one of our colleagues doing this, and here is the supervisor live. <laughs> and it's live, not somebody in Texas, they are here. And maybe you will benefit of this in the methods they are doing, in the documents they are using for their research that you can apply to your research. I hope you are open that they can use them, right? Oh, absolutely. I hope so. And uh, feel free to come and ask the supervisor about anything that you need in your work. We are all open as faculty to help everybody, even if not our classes. Without much ado, I'll give uh, the podium and the microphone to uh, Dr. Cabbage and Sean to tell us what they are doing, and we'll spend about 20, 30 minutes in doing this. I want you. Say hi. 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 Big one. Hi. To take benefit for your work from their work. So don't sit passive and see what are they doing. Take benefit, take ideas, as you said. So it wouldn't be a waste of time. Uh, see what I mean? So here is a microphone for my friend. I'll give you this. this. Thank you, Dr. Wabi. And thank you guys for being here tonight and helping us out with this research. We really do appreciate it. What we're trying to do is assess. Di different ways of teaching, particularly in a trades, in, in, in using power equipment, power tools, what is the best way to teach people how to operate power tools and such safely? Now, how can you educate, you know, doing that kind of thing? And for, for us, we, uh, I'm in particularly in a construction, uh, construction um, management type arena. For our, you know, how do we train people effectively to do, do their tasks safely without getting hurt and that kind of thing. So what we've done is we've got three different teaching methodologies that we've asked uh, three different, four different classes of Dr. Wabi's to uh, participate with us. And we're going to look at, and I'm going to let Sean explain it to you in more detail, but we're, we're looking at uh, vir basically virtual reality. We're looking at using PowerPoint type lectures. And we're also looking at hands-on instruction to see what is the best way to teach people how to operate power tools that in a meaning and meaningful and effective way. And what we're going to do is we're going to what we want what we're going to do is we're going to give out. Uh, Sean is giving out now a pre-test and a and a couple other things. I let him go into detail to test your test the knowledge that you have now. And then in this class, what we're going to go downstairs and do is do the actual in the lab you know, hands-on demonstration uh, for that kind of training and come back and do a post-test to see how well you have retained that information. So what we're going to do is compare this kind of instruction and then another class did a virtual reality with a 360 degree, uh, 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 you know, the virtual reality goggles with 360 degree cameras, but we had training in that, in that fashion. And then a third class, and then the other two classes did a, the traditional PowerPoint. And so we're going to measure the before and after results and then compare them to see how much improvement for each teaching methodology, which is a pretty neat, you know, first step in, in uh, analyzing how well we do what we, uh, you know, how well, how well technology can enhance or not enhance learning. You know, sometimes we get, we think technology is the end, end game of it all, but does it really work or not? You know, and that's kind of what we want to assess. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sean and give you a lot more detail. All right. Thank you, Dr. Cabbage, and again, thank you, Dr. Wavi, and thank everybody for participating. Um, I see a couple familiar faces who've already undergone the study, so if, you, if you're already undergoing the study, just sit tight. Um, you can still come along with us, but for those who are doing it now, um, today, like Dr. Cabbage said, we're um, comparing three training methods, and today, during this class period, I'm actually going to show you guys uh, the live training demonstration and we're going to be using the miter saw, the circular saw, and the drill press in the uh, construction lab here in Clem Hall. And right now you all should have three documents in front of you. One is the consent form. That's the only form you should sign today. 
Um, and that's just consenting that I'm able to use you guys as my participants and use you guys' data. Afterwards, though, you don't have to put your name on anything. You don't have to put your name on the questionnaire, the pretest, nor the post test. Everything will remain anonymous. And so um, I'm going to give you guys about 10 minutes to fill that out. Yes, sir. In general. Yeah. Uh, how many have taken this, this bigger than this in the previous class? Raise your hand for one. Did you see the back? Did you back? Five. Uh, all right. You guys can come with us and shift it, and, and then you kind of get an idea of, of how uh, the different training was, is, is performed and such. And, and so perhaps you can use that for your studies and such like that in the future. If you research where you go to work or maybe you go to that. Uh, uh, you know, join in with us and come downstairs and, and, and take a look. You know, take a look at that's going on. Do they need to fill the forms? No, you don't no. even need to fill the forms. And do not take the test. So let me yeah. if we were given. Yeah, I already I already talked to him, right, but um. Right, yeah, the pretest. Um, this is the pretest, so if you don't know every answer, that's okay. That's just to assess to see if you have any knowledge on the tools that we're using, because that could possibly affect the data. And so, um, just answer it to the best of your ability, and uh, 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 there's don't worry about getting it right or wrong. Yeah, don't worry about getting it right or wrong. This is just a pretest. This well, is you so. Don't know, leave it blank. That's fine too. This is this is just so I could have something to compare to the post test. And um, the treatment for this study is going to be the training, and today you guys undergo, undergo the live training. So after you're done with all the documents, we're going to head downstairs, and I'm going to train everyone on uh, the three tools we're using live. And then we're going to take the, you're going to take the post test over again. And um, afterwards, I have a uh, practical test sign-up sheet. We're also performing a practical hands-on test, too. And that's just to see if um, the training method actually works for uh, using the tools hands-on. Do take the post test. You can sign up if you can. It'll be really helpful. An illustration: body in motion stays in motion. Body at rest stays in rest unless there's a force. You know, he came up with the idea or hypothesis for this. But then he had to test it, you know, in reality. We all have the old apple example where he dro the apple dropped on a tree and landed on his head. I don't know how true that is, but, but nevertheless, uh, you know, he, you know, so he, he came up with this idea and he tested it. And as he tested it and tested it and isolated the different variables in his testing, he found it to be, he found it to be uh, uh, true. Now, he could have found it to be false. So what was wrong? Well, maybe the hypothesis was misconceived. Maybe there's other variables that, that added to the, the uh, influence of his test, or maybe he's just totally off base. But generally, researchers are curious people. They are really curious about the way things are and the way things can be and you know, what, what's going on in the real world. And then the inventors take that research, you know, the way things are, and, and try to manipulate it to create something better. And I think that's, that's, that to me is the fun thing about research. And I'm sorry to go on on that. This is a research class, right, Dr. Wabi? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I, I like doing research myself because I think the only way to improve the, ba the body of knowledge that we have in society right now is for each and every one of us to ask questions, to, to jake that leap, leap of faith that Dr. Cheney was asking about and to, to progress are the progressed society in a positive way. We're gonna go over a little bit of identification. This right here is called the chuck. This is where the drill bit is placed. There's an opening at the bottom. The chuck has three holes, one here, one around the back, and one here. This right here is called the chuck key. This is used to actually tighten the chuck once the drill bit is placed inside. And as you can see, the the bit is already in there, but if I unloosen one of the holes right here, the drill bit's gonna fall out. Usually, you want to tighten all three holes with the chuck key just to make sure that the drill bit is secure. All right, now the drill bit is secure, and you just want to put the chuck key back. 
This right here is the down feed handles and that just feeds the drill bit into your material. Right here are the power switches, start and stop, clearly labeled. Right here, this is called the table crank handle. This lowers and raises the table, as you can see. Put it right there. Why does it wiggle like this? Well, um, this jet drill press is not properly manufactured. The track, as you can see, is not bolted hmm. to the column at all. So right now I have a clamp resting on it until we figure out a way to actually bolt this track down without messing up the track. So they manufactured it this way? Yeah, it, it didn't come. It, it looked like it had some adhesive on the column, but I mean, That's once right you, after use, the uh, adhesive wears off, so. Okay. And can't really bolt the track where it's uh, buckling out at because then you won't be able to use the entire column. So right now we actually have a clamp resting where it's uh, buckling that. Okay. But again, downward feed handles, chuck, 